welcome back to Bee Pharma Bites. Today's topic is going to be a little bit different one because I'll be touching analytical chemistry from the practical point of view. Today I'm planning to cover the basics of titration. So I'll be covering what are titrations, then what are the different types of titrations, how these types are made and then we will cover what are different definitions related to titrations and we'll actually learn the process of titration and then we'll study how to perform standardization of secondary standard substances using a primary standard substance. I'll actually tell you the example of standardization of a secondary standard substance. So this video is going to be very informative and it will help you a lot for practical understanding of the concept. So stay tuned. Before starting with the video, I wanted to request you all that if you have not subscribed my channel yet, please consider subscribing. It's absolutely free. And please press that bell icon which is next to the subscribe button so that you will get all the notifications whenever I upload any new video. So now let's dive in the video. So friends, let me start from the very basics of chemistry. Basically chemistry is a branch of science and science is incomplete without this branch that is chemistry. And that is the reason why chemistry is called as a central science. Because all other branches of science actually need the basic understanding of chemistry. And that is why chemistry is a very vast subject. Basically, if you want to define chemistry, you can define it as a branch of science which deals with the study of matter, their physical and chemical properties, their composition and structure. So basically it covers everything about the substance. So being a very vast sub subject, it has been divided in several branches. So if you consider chemistry as a central subject, it can be divided in various branches. And the first one, which is my favorite, is organic chemistry. Organic chemistry is nothing but a branch of chemistry which deals with the study of carbon compounds. Right? Then there is inorganic chemistry. Inorganic chemistry deals with the study of elements other than carbon. Then there is one more branch called as biochemistry. Now biochemistry is a very interesting branch and it is a hybrid of biology and chemistry. So basically biochemistry covers the chemistry of living organisms like DNA and macromolecules, proteins, etc. So chemistry of living organisms is being covered under biochemistry. There are several other branches like physical chemistry. Now in physical chemistry we uh, study the physical chemical properties of the elements or compounds and there is one very important branch of chemistry which I am interested in today and it is analytical chemistry. Now what is analytical chemistry? It is a branch of chemistry which deals with the determination of chemical composition of a sample. So when I say determination of chemical composition, it can be done in two ways. Either you can identify the presence or absence of particular chemical component in any sample or you can quantify the amount of that particular component in the sample. So analytical chemistry can give you two results. Either it helps you to identify the components or it can help you to quantify the components. Now both of these factors are covered under analytical chemistry. If you are dealing with identification of components, it will be called as qualitative analysis. And if you are dealing with quantification of or estimation of amount of components in the sample, you are dealing with quantitative method of analysis. So basically qualitative and quantitative methods of analysis are a part of analytical chemistry. So now under analytical chemistry, what are the different techniques or methods which we can use to actually fulfill our requirements? 
department. So there, these methods or these techniques can be divided in two types. So these analytical methods can be divided in two types. First one is classical methods and the next one is instrumental method. Now classical methods are nothing but the traditional methods which we have been using throughout these years. And under classical methods, if you want to go for qualitative analysis, you can go with the simple tests like finding out the color, the odor, the melting point, the boiling point of the compound or simple tests like limit tests. So these kind of simple, simple tests can give you an idea about the qualitative analysis hmm? under classical methods. Now, if you want to carry out quantitative analysis under classical methods, then you have two options. For quantitative analysis under classical methods, if you want to measure the mass of substance, you have to go with gravimetric analysis. And if you want to measure volume of a sample, then you have to go with volumetric analysis. So basically, quantitative analysis under classical methods is divided in two types, gravimetric analysis and volumetric analysis. Volumetric analysis is nothing but titrations. So our topic of discussion today is volumetric methods of analysis, that is titration. Now coming to the advanced techniques like instrumental methods, whenever classical methods fail to give you desired result, you have to rescue towards the instrumental methods. Now instrumental methods make use of different chemical and physical properties of a substance. Like they may use electrode potential, they may use current flowing through them, they may use the tendency to absorb or emit a radiation. They may use different different physico-chemical parameters and particular instruments to give you quantitative analysis. So examples include uh, potentiometry, voltammetry, amperometry, then you can uh, say chromatography. Under chromatography there are different types like you can go with high pressure liquid chromatography that is HPLC or high pressure thin layer chromatography HPTLC or you can go with gas chromatography. Then you can uh, go to methods like UV visible spectroscopy or IR spectroscopy or mass spectrometry etc. So there are numerous methods available under instrumental methods of analysis. These are the advanced techniques which need the instrument and a skilled technician to operate that instrument and it can give you very precise results. But today our topic of discussion is volumetric methods of analysis. So I'll be directly switching towards the titrations.